Glad you could join us out. Welcome, Sam. Welcome. Glad you could join us today. Welcome. Beat your ass. Beat your ass. Beat your ass. Beat your ass. Sam, you thought you'd get that in first. Huh? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, does anybody have anything that's just absolutely burning for them to discuss or talk about? Do you have a subject? I was just checking. In the scripture? Oh, I, yep. You do? Okay. No, 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 no. no I, I don't have a predefined scripture. No, I don't. Mm -hmm. I have an identified one. Oh, man, you just text me. I don't have an outline of it. Hey, you don't want to deal with that little thing you put on the thing? What? <laughs> me put on the thing? Yeah. Oh. You put on the string? You don't want to deal with that? Yeah. Not, not necessarily because because the only participation that we got that was you. I mean, it's not like everybody listened to it. Either. True that. <laughs> so. Did, was there was there a description discussed in that in that exchange? Oh. Did you send us something and wanted us to respond to it? You could. It was, in, it was just in the check, the, the, the text chain, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. He said, you said read this or like that? What he said? Yeah, well, it's uh, um, so um, people, when you make a music video, you, the lyrics, some of them, they just, they just sing or rap, and some of them, you can see the lyrics. So, the, you know, the words were on the screen, so I wanted you to look at the words that the guy was saying. And let me know what you guys thought. But you know, you and Victor always get back to me. <coughs> so. Was there something that was yeah. Defining in the words? Was it was it scripture or anything like that? Of course it's, it's of course it's not scripture because okay. no no, it's not script it's it's the way the world thinks. It's every it's everything that we come back with. That we we read in scripture, but the world teaches you opposite from scripture, and these are the people that lead the majority of the people in the world. So, you know, um, we we had a discussion yesterday about people who live their life a certain kind of way. They they never inquire. They never want to know the Lord through study. They want to go to heaven, but they don't know. They don't want to learn the scripture. But they say, I'm a good person, and I should go to heaven. And the guy was saying that, hey, uh, the Lord has a limited love. Would you do your son like that? So he was saying that no matter what he did, he should be able to get into the, the gates of heaven as well. You know, And that's his message. And that's what I was telling Brother Jimmy. That's his message. And he has a lot of people that listen to his content. And they believe what he what did he say? They believe what he said. Well, maybe maybe he believes that they know his heart. <clears throat> what is what yeah, is the Sam thing thing too? Well, Sam thinks that's what the scripture talks about. Ain't Sam, but the scripture talks about the heart of the town. No, no, Sam, but we talked about last week that you you you're in the in the in the in the, in the, in the throes of sin and doing something that you know is sinful, and you continue to or you did it or you're doing it. Mm -hmm. And God happens to crack the sky, or happens to take you out of here. You said you felt like you know you go to heaven anyway because of your heart, right? Yeah, because because of I believe I believe in my heart that He is the Son of God. Well, then, and so that He would overlook the fact that you in the midst of sin right now. He overlooked that. He, well, did, did Jesus said uh, to forgive, and somebody and was it Peter the apostle said to do it seven times? No, you do it seven times seven seven times. Uh, Seven times seven hundred or something along that line. But we're not talking about forgiveness. Well, well, we're talking about being in the throes of sin. In sin, you're in a sin act. You're, you're involved in sin. Okay. Going right now, and for whatever reason, you don't get a chance to say forgive me. You still, because of your heart, you're going to heaven, right? If it, if it, yeah, if, it, if it's in my heart, that's right. Because God, yeah. me God measures the heart. God tests the heart. Right. Yeah, that, well, that's that, exactly that, what you that's, just said. That's what the rapper believed too. Yeah. <laughs> And he, See, and that's what I got with yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, he prayed, and he's on the hospital bed, and right when he left the hospital bed, he went and slept with the nurse and found the drug man, and he said, the Lord ain't going to turn, 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 he's going to let me in. Go ahead, Jared. But if, if it's in your heart, 
where was in your heart when you did what you weren't supposed to do? What was in your heart then? We don't know. Sam. Maybe I had something. I mean, this, uh, for me anyway. You know, like, I'm constantly thinking about stuff all the time. And, you know, I have a constant prayer to ask the Lord to take away all the ugliness, you know, in my life, in my thoughts, and, and everything. I don't think you're ever away from your thoughts. You know, uh, so you're sinning all the time. Why? Not everybody. Why? Because, I Ed, Ed, I agree with this. It is a daily battle between the flesh, right, and the spirit. But each day it is also the battle of trying to crush the flesh to allow the spirit to have more of the control over me than the flesh have control over me. And so that should be a constant thing. If I'm sinning every day, then I'm wondering what in the world is the use now, of coming here this afternoon. You, you know what? But, but see, I just don't know. I just don't know how you, you know, that you get away from it. You know, by doing what you said every day, by all throughout the day. Yeah. By I, thanking yeah, God for I, whatever, I, I praising I, God for for whatever. And continuing to build that relationship with him to where you know, my I, thoughts are now his thoughts because I want to be closer with him. And I know that as long as I stay there, right. I don't do I'm anything crushing that flesh. Anybody. You know, I don't do anything to anybody. Um, that's, what that, that's what that rapper believes. What, what Tits, where does it say in the Bible that if I don't do anything to anybody, I can go to heaven? I, I didn't say Okay, all right. Other thing. You know, like, what I try to do, is that, or what I really want to do anyway, I want to conduct myself like I think Jesus would want me to conduct myself. Okay. I mean, and that means, you know, see, and that means helping other people. You know, I don't know how you can expect to go to heaven and you ain't never lent nobody a, a lending hand the whole time you was on the face of the earth. Okay. How do you do that? I, I don't know. <clears throat> you I know, don't, that's two separate conversations. Right. Yeah. Right. I, 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 I know that, that ain't, that's really not two conversations. You know, that's, that's, that's how you're supposed to, to me, that's how you're supposed to live your life. Can there be an unsafe philanthropist? Yeah, you're supposed to love thy neighbor as thyself. Yeah, like when you yeah. and you for it. I, I get that, but in terms of you committing sin, that's a whole different question or a whole different conversation. But, but, I, but, but I'm talking about your thought process. You know, like, I think about a lot of things, you know? You know. Now, what do you think about this sin? Yeah, that, you know that if Jesus is not uh, standing in, in the gap for you, you lost. You know. One, one of the things we were talking about, what people say and, and the followers that, that uh, you know, uh, the guy that Avery ask us to look at the lyrics or whatever it is, you know. Uh, and, and there, you know, there is, you know, in Jesus' teaching recorded in Matthew, you know, it talks in uh, Matthew 16. Matthew 16. <clears throat> if we go to Matthew 16. And, and we can start, you know, at 16 and 1. Matthew 
That's Matthew 15 and 1? No, 16 and 1. 16. Matthew 16 and 1. said on Sunday as well, when he said, who do men say I am? Men. That is in context with what he brought up about the rapper and those that follow him. 
somebody else may bring up about somebody else. We need to know what they're thinking so that we are prepared and equipped with what we know, as you said, we need to know, to combat them, to let them know, because it is our mission in Matthew 28 and 19 to go therefore and teach all nations. So we have to go and teach that nation of rapper and nation of followers of that rapper and others that need to know who Christ is, really is. See, that's, he even said that in that last thing you said, 12. Then they understood that he did not tell them to beware of the heaven of bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees. We need to be made aware of what this guy is saying so that we can take what we know from the word and bring truth to that untruth. And also, let me see if I understand. Ed was, Ed was, was giving us a part of himself and, and some things that maybe leads him to be strong with the scripture, but also in his life he may have other things. Is this what you just read? Helping us to understand the tie-in to what, what what Ed was explaining to us, or did it did it go off? I mean, I'm, well, well, see, well, sometimes, 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 I think we rely on what we feel, and we interpret, you know, <laughs> we interpret or we want to apply Christ from our feelings, and I, and you know, one of the things about it is, uh, you yeah, know. And that's what the Pharisees and the Sadducees were doing. They were interpreting the law and Christ through their, their vision, their understanding. I think that we have to base it on what the scripture said and not mm -hmm. on what we feel because there's going to be a time. I know in my, in my life there has been a time when there's a rug between my feelings and what scripture says. And scripture has the ruling voice and it is the sovereign truth. It's not what I feel is the sovereign truth, it's what scripture says is the sovereign truth. Well, what, oh. what, about, what, what about all of these people that were uneducated 150 years, 200 years ago, you know, all they had to go on was what they felt. You know, it was, well, no, they, you know, you know, no, yeah, they, they didn't, didn't. No, no, there was something else. <coughs> because the job, Christ said, if I go not away, I will, you know, the comforter will not come. So I must go away that I can send the comforter, and the comforter is the Spirit of God which will lead and guide you into all truth. I mean, that you, the, the Spirit of God is the ultimate, and, 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 and he is going to send it how he sees fit into those people's lives. Before that said, what you just happened, uh, they had a schoolmaster. The law. They always had a teacher. They always had someone to teach them. Even if they were uneducated and couldn't read, they always had someone to teach them. Now let, let me give you a few uh, scriptures. Uh, I'm going to begin. I'm going to go. Did that, did that before he goes there? Did did that answer your question, Jerry? Well, I think I think where he's going with scripture may may also add to Ed thought and my thought because I I think some of what Ed is, is looking for is is a real thought for me as well. But let's yeah, let's go to scripture. So. Okay, so. In the context of thought, in Acts 24 and 16, it says, So I strive always to keep my conscience clear before God and man. In 2 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, beginning at verse 3, it says, For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought 
to make it obedient to Christ, to him pertaining to thoughts. Now, when I read scriptures such as Romans 8, and I hear Paul say in, I'm going to begin at verse 3, when Paul says, for what the law was powerless to do, because it was weakened by the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering. And he condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirements <coughs> of the law might be met in us. Then he says, who do not live according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Then in verse 12, he goes on to say, therefore, brothers and sisters, we have an obligation, but it is not to the flesh to live according to it. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit you put to death the misdeed of the body, you will live. Now I keep seeing Paul point to living according to the spirit <coughs> versus living according to the flesh. But whenever I ask somebody, how can you live according to the spirit? They don't really have an answer. Instead, they'll say, you must be born again. And then when you say, okay, well, what does that mean? Does that mean once you're born again, you have put off the old nature, you have stopped being the old creation, and you become the new creation? And then they say, well, as long as you're still living in a sinful body or a sinful flesh, or as long as you still have on this skin, you're still going to be a sinner. So then I have to go in a circle and say, well, what did Paul mean living according to the Spirit? And it's a thick circle because people don't know. Now, when Paul says... Well, dying in, daily can, can we finish? Can we finish? Yeah, I don't know. We're going to go in a circle right now. <laughs> Trust me. Die daily. I know. He said that already. But tomorrow, we're going to be right back in the same circle. God knows my heart or I'm, whatever the case, whatever people say. But what Paul says in Galatians 4 and 8, he says, Formerly, when you did not know God, you were slaves to those who by nature are not God, or are not gods, lowercase g. But now that you know God, or rather are known by God, how is it that you are turning back to those weak and miserable Forces. Now, if you recall in Matthew 7, Jesus said the story or he made the statement, away from me, you workers of iniquity, I never knew you. I always find people that want to go to heaven, but they don't want to know God. What that means is they don't want to read and study the scriptures. How else can you know God? except reading and learning about him through the scripture. You want to go to heaven, the place where God is, but you don't want to know him. Why are you on earth? You reject me on earth, I reject you in heaven. On earth, you're not reading and studying your scriptures. You're just saying, I'm saved, I'm born again, I'm spirit-filled. You're saying whatever somebody told you to say but you're not learning about the creator. So when you want to go to the place where the creator is, but you don't know anything about the creator, how awkward is that? You want to be in a place where God dwells, but you don't know nothing about him. So when you get there, Jesus says, did I not cast out demons in your name? Did I not do this in your name? He says, I never, I, I never knew you. It's our obligation to live and walk according to the Spirit while we're on earth so that we can know Him while we're on earth. If you don't do that and you die, you never knew Him. And so when we have these struggles, we, we got to find a way. I can't help anybody in here with that struggle. I can only help myself. You got to find a way to control the thoughts you got to find a way to control the actions. You got to find a way to overcome yourself. Take up your cross. 
whatever Jesus says, deny yourself, take up your cross, do whatever you got to do. You, you, you can enter into heaven with one arm. Or one leg, or one eye. But if you make it to hell, you're going to wish you would have made it with one eye or one leg. So whatever is causing you to be corrupt, get rid of it. Praise God. Amen. But you know, uh, I believe that uh, I agree with everything you just said. Uh, but the bottom line is that in Jeremiah, it tells you that uh, before people had the Bible to read and everything, in 30, Je Jeremiah 31, he tells you that he would put you put him in your heart. He would put the spirit in your heart. Even people that didn't know how to read, God put it in your heart. If you would turn to Jeremiah 31, I'll read it for you. <clears throat> Jeremiah 31, 31. Behold, the day come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah, not uh, according to the not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that they took them by the hand, that I took them by the hand and, and bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was an husband unto them, saith the Lord. But this be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days saith the Lord I will put my law in their inward parts and write them in their hearts that don't mean that you, that you got to read the book all to, uh, the, some people didn't have knowledge back in those days to read the book we, we, we have the we have the word that he'll put that he put that he put the word in their hearts and so that's so the bottom line is Everybody sins, in, in my opinion, everybody sins every day. Yeah. Bishop McKinney used to preach that, he, that, that, that if you put him in a dark room, if, if it, it, was, it was, was a problem with him coming out not sinning uh, or, or, or sinning, he would probably be to sin because you'd be to thought something. This is why we got to always pray and ask the Lord to forgive us for our sins. Ain't that yes. what Simon was saying? Yeah. I, I wouldn't hear what Sam was talking. Galatians 5. Is that not good? 5 or 6 Yes, sir. Yeah. 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 So the law, the law the, the, yeah. God's, God's law have been written to our, in our heart. In our, those that are saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Spirit, the, the law have been written in our hearts already, according to the Bible. That's what I just read. According to uh, the, the law have been written in your hearts already. Go ahead, Jim. Galatians 5, 16. Mm -hmm. This I say then, walk in the spirit, mm -hmm. and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other. So that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the spirit, ye are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, Cleanlinesses, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like of the which I tell you before, as I also told you in the times past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Mm -hmm. Against such there is no law. I'm going to stop there. Look, this thing is sort of basic right here. This sort of lays it out in the ABC. Um, walk, walk in the spirit. Walk in the spirit. And whatever that, whatever that means to you in terms of whether you've got to read every day, whether you've got to listen to gospel music every day, whatever keeps you straight in God. That's what you, he gives you examples here of things that you shouldn't be doing. If you're walking in the spirit. See, walking in the spirit is just basically doing what Jesus said don't do or that you should do. Do the right thing. To quote Spike Lee, do the right thing. Yeah. Type of thing. Just I mean, that's what walking in the spirit is. It's not a mystical thing. It's that if I know, if I know that um, me looking at this particular magazine with these girls and it is going to get me Going, I shouldn't look in the magazine. If I know that if I have a drink, I'm on one five, I'm gonna end up drunk, 
I shouldn't have a drink. Mm -hmm. if, if I know that these cigarettes and or whatever is killing me type of thing, I shouldn't be smoking. It's, it's not difficult to desire to do the right thing if that's your desire. Now, if that's not your desire, if your desire is to the flesh and you want to do things in the flesh. Stop for a minute. What about all of those things that you mentioned that somebody does, but they they, they don't let the, they don't let it overcome them. But if they're doing the things here and they let it overcome, Jesus said, "Don't do these things." Well, what James said is that. Let me read it. Well, and and and. and, and. Jimmy stopped a little early. Can I stop? Well, go ahead. I, I well, 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 and, and, yeah, that it, was to it, me. It was it, enough it, for me. Yeah, and I, you know, yeah, because because yeah, sorry, it, it, yeah. Where'd you? St I stopped at twenty three, Rick. Okay. I guess there is no law. I, okay. 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 Those who uh, those, uh, those yeah. who yeah. belong to Christ Jesus mm -hmm. have crucified the sinful nature with its passions and desires. Mm -hmm. Since we live by the Spirit. Let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking and envying each other. Brothers, if someone is caught in a sin, ye who are spiritual should restore him gently. But watch yourselves, or you also may be tempted. Carry each other's burdens. And in this way you will feel the law of Christ. If anyone thinks he is something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. Each Amen. one should test his own action. Then he can take pride in himself with, without comparing himself to somebody else. For each one should carry his own load. Anyone who receives instruction in the word must share all good things with his instructors. Do, do not be conceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reap what he sows. The man who sows to please his sinful nature from the nature will reap destruction. The one who sows to please the spirit from the spirit will reap eternal life. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have an opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. See what large letters I use as I write you in my own hand. Those who want to make a good impression outwardly are trying to compel you to be circumcised. The only reason they do this is to avoid being persecuted from the cross of Christ. Not even those who are circumcised obey the law, yet they want you to be circumcised that you may be boast about your flesh. May I never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, through which the world has been crucified, been crucified to me and I to the world. Neither circumcision nor uncircumcision means anything. What counts is a new creation, peace and mercy to all who follow this rule, even to the Israel of God. Finally, let no one cause me trouble, for I bear on my body the marks of Jesus. The grace of our Lord be with you, be with your spirit, brother. Amen. James said in uh, the first chapter, beginning in verse 13. That was Ephesians, that was Galatians he went to 5 six. and 6. It started at 5 and 6. Well, and I went there all the way to and he, went, he went Came to the James 1 and 13. 1 and 13. 13. 13. He went to Galatians 6 after we were doing 5. Oh, you did? He went over? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, 
I knew after the fruit of the spirit, the, it ended soon, but he kept going. I didn't know what he was at. Yeah, he went on, kept reading. He kept reading yeah. until he found a period. <laughs> yeah. 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 You know, it says that the spirit, it says that be not mocked. God is not, ye not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever man sows, that shall be also reap. Yeah, you saw That's very spirit. deep there. I mean, you get it. Yeah, you saw All that spirit. stuff is that, you know, and you, I mean, it, it's, if your mindset is on pleasing God, thirteen, then you'll do what His Word says. I mean, you know, I mean, we're not, we're talking about thoughts. That's what Jesus <laughs> said: If you love me, keep my commandments. Yeah. And and, well, and real quick, and, I, and then I want everybody to read that. But God knows your heart, right? That's what we're hearing. That's what we keep saying. God also knows your heart when you're getting ready to do what you shouldn't do. He might know your heart because you say, I love Jesus. Well, if I love Jesus so much, why am I also getting ready to do what I'm about to do? God knows your heart then, too. Well, then how can you call me Lord and do not the things I say do? Go ahead, I'm sorry. No, uh, and then that goes right along with what James is about to say. James says in uh, 113, when tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each from? person... James 1 and 13. 13. Oh, okay. When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their, by their own evil desires and enticed. Then, after desire is conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, once it is full grown, it gives birth to death. So eventually it will consume you. You're going to have, everybody has a different desire. What I mean by that is some people like to drink, some people like to smoke. Some <clears> people <throat> want fame, some people want greed. Some, you know, but uh, uh, some people desire to be a pastor. Some people desire just to be in the congregation because some people know that if, if I'm a pastor, I'm going to get special treatment. <laughs> I'm going to get fed first. But anyway, what I'm saying is, is that you're going to get drug away by that desire. And once that desire is conceived, like a birth, it's going to give birth to sin. And once that sin is full grown, it gives birth to death. That's when it consumes you. Because once you start doing something, you that's when you're going to be thinking about that thing more and more and more. And then it will consume you. Um, and real quick on that. With that sin, with that uh, giving birth to sin, you know, sin and blah blah blah, and then and bring forth death. That's another really good reason why people should have a daily access to this thing to study it because you'd be talking to somebody and you use that word death, they think I'm gonna die. They don't even understand what that death really, what that word death means in this situation. Well, in in this room, we should literally understand what it means. I mean, when we go all the way back to Adam and Eve, and they didn't die. We should understand that it produces well. It's it's producing a death in your body. So that relationship with the Creator that we think that we have is no longer there because now you're you have produced death through sin through that desire. That's why you must put off the old self and put on the new self. The old self was was corrupted by its evil desires. Now. I wanted to. And um, that's what, well, one of the things. And, and please continue reading. Where? 16. Come on. I don't have to read the whole thing. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry. You're right. Let me finish. 16. Don't be deceived, my dear brothers and sisters. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. He chose to give us birth. Through the word of truth, that we might be a kind of first fruits of all he created. Period. <clears throat> My dear brother, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. For man's anger does not bring about the righteousness, the righteous life that God desires. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth mm. and the evil that so pre that is so prevalent, and humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. 
do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourself. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like a man who looks at his face in the mirror and after looking at himself, he goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. <laughs> but the man who looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues to do this, forgetting, not forgiving, not forgetting what he has heard, mm -hmm. but doing it. He will be, be, be blessed in what he does. If anyone considers himself religious and yet not keep a tight rein on his tongue, he deceives himself and his religion is worthless. Religion that comes from the Father accepts as a pure and faultless at is pure and faultless is this. Look after the orphans and the widows in their distress and keep oneself from being polluted by the world. Amen. Amen. Now I had a and now, now that was good that you finished. That was good. <laughs> I hear that. Sometimes you go to the board. That was good. Sometimes you go over the board. Now, I wanted to rebuttal to what Elder John said. And I, I want to I wanna ask the room. Now, Elder John brought out Jeremiah 31. But it's not, it's not negative. He brought out 31 31. Uh, I'm going to make a new covenant with the people of Israel and Judah. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be like it was in the past. Or he says, it's not going to be like the old covenant. But he says, I'm going to put my laws in their mind and write it in their heart. Right? Now, I got family members that tell me what Elder John said. You don't have to read it. God put it there. I got an auntie that tell me she don't have to read the Bible. When she go to sleep, the Lord downloads her. <laughs> And it's just in there. But when you ask her a question, she can't answer no question. Now, Paul said in Galatians 2 and 14, he said, for through the law, I died to the law so that I might live for God. The people in the old covenant, they studied the law of Moses. According to 2 Corinthians, the third chapter, it was transitory. The law came with glory, but it was passing away. So the only way that it was written, it had to be transferred from a tablet of stone to a tablet of human heart. It went from ink to spirit. The only way it gets written is that you read it and then you learn not to be an adulterer. You see, before I read it, it wasn't nothing wrong with it. My buddies told me, hey, Ain't nothing wrong with it. When we go to Vegas, take the ring off, nobody know. When I was on deployment, they said, hey, take the ring off, nobody know. It's almost as if God is not watching. It was not written in my heart and on my mind because I never studied it. But it seems like people teach or, or tell you that you don't have to read it. You just should already know it. Is that, is that what we're saying? No. That's definitely not true. No. I, I don't, and I don't believe that's what Elder John was yeah, saying. I, mean, I believe Elder mean, John, yeah. because he's living proof, and I'm only saying that because I've been around him for many, many, many years. Well, how does it, how does he get to Vegas? No, 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 I don't know if he took the ring off, but, <laughs> but no. But what is what I'm saying. How does it get there? How does the laws get on your heart and in your mind? To where the Lord does know your heart. How does it get there? He's never, I don't think he said we No, 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 not what he said. Okay. I'm asking how does it get, how does it get placed in it your was, It was just read in the word just a few seconds ago. By getting in this book, studying it, getting to know him, and then living this word. Yeah, but there's too many people that I come across. That's too many people. And too many people. Really? No, I'm people. saying. Religious that people. Too many people. That say, you know, the and they say, I don't have to read all that. I'm not under the law of Moses. I don't have to read all that. They, they, a lot of people tell me that I don't have to read that stuff. 
Did you, what, what do they say every two? The scripture says to study to show yourself approved. Like that's right. But they only studied the New Testament. So they, so that's what, so they, they do, excuse me, they do study the New Testament. They're telling you that they don't have to study the Old. Is that what they saying? never want to go back to the Old Testament. They always say, I don't know why you spend so much time in the Old Testament. That's what they always tell me. I don't know why you keep studying Moses. Moses can't save you. I don't know why you you, you, you studying Elijah and Elisha and all these. They're right things. about that. Moses can't save them. But 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 but, 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 but am but, I right about that? Moses cannot save them. It doesn't say anywhere where yes, Moses right. saves anybody. Huh? But By grace what did saved. Christ come to fulfill? If you don't know what this was back here, what in the world was Christ coming to fulfill then? I bet you they can't answer that either. Well, you won't even know what you're looking for. If Moses well, doesn't write, the Lord will raise up a prophet from among the fellow Israelites. You must listen to him. Matter of fact, Jesus even said, Moses wrote about me. But if you don't believe what Moses wrote, how are you going to believe what I say? So if you don't even know what Moses wrote, how can you believe who Jesus even is? I bet, it, I bet they don't even know he was being prophesied. Jesus was being prophesied in the Old Testament. They, I know. I, mean, I, don't, they don't, I don't think they know that. But like, like, but, but they, they have Jesus. Well, they so, have so, Jesus. Well, so, so if a person, if, if a person just learns, and don't get me wrong, because because I, I, I think I told you I'm in the Old Testament more than I am the New. But that's okay. That's me. But if a person learns about Jesus Christ in the New Testament, and they believe in their hearts, and I always say heart because that's what the Scripture said. They believe that, and they're not. Listen, nobody's perfect. Nobody here is a hundred percent. You can believe in your heart and still make a mistake. This is the scripture says, "A good man falls seven times, but Jesus will uphold him." You can, you can fall. You can make a mistake. You that had, doesn't mean you're proud to you, had a, you had a question you were starting with. You said if a person, something about that. Yeah, yeah, if you have a question. Yeah, yeah. No, I have a question. I, I'm saying a good. person can. I believe a person can. Believe in Jesus Christ through the New Testament because it's in there. Let me actually let, let me finish. Andrew. I'm sorry. Let, my let, my let man, but see if you're right. You okay, okay, brother? Let, let me finish because I sit quiet we, for a long time. We, you know we, what I do? The two weeks ago, I was doing. Come on. No, uh, I'm just saying. But, but I'm saying if this person through the New Testament read, read, hear, sees, practice, and, 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 and they believe in Jesus Christ in his heart, that's what the scripture says. Doesn't make, nobody overrides God. That's what he said. Do they believe in their heart? God makes that decision. Should they read? Did they, you better believe this. But the Bible says if you believe in your heart and you do not doubt that Jesus Christ died for your sin, God will accept you. That's what the scripture says. I'm with you on that. I practice all of this. I come here. I, I give myself to God, but if another person doesn't do all of that, that's why Jesus died for our sin. Because well, he knows we're not perfect. Well, Sam, if a person like myself, I'll do exactly what you just said. I'm going to take that one thing out of Romans. No, I didn't say no one thing out of Romans. Well, that's, well, I said that's all you use. Testament. That's yeah. all you but, use. But it's in, it's in more than Romans. Okay. But if I believe in my heart that Jesus died on the cross to save me of my sins, mm -hmm. those are... Empty words. No, no, no. No, uh, no not, just words. not just words. Not just words now. Finish. They're empty words to a person that now has to get out in this life mm -hmm. and live the rest of your life on faith. And where does faith come from? Where is this faith part coming in, which is supposed to be the foundation mm -hmm. of all of this? But if you're just saying, yeah, I believe in my heart that Jesus died on the cross. No, no, what is it? And if no. I came up to that person, yeah. I said, what does that really mean to you in your everyday living? Exactly. What does that mean? Exactly. I get you on that. I bet you they I, I get you on that. That's all they well, got. Hang on now. I agree with that. And maybe I'm just not putting that out. When I say believe in your heart, I mean you're doing to the best of your ability to fulfill and to live a good life. So I'm not just throwing out, oh, I just believe. No, believe means, that's why it says believe in your heart. You're not doubt. Your heart drives you. Your, not your brain. That's why God measures the heart. He knows that. They got scriptures on that. Deuteronomy 8 talks about that. He says, I did this to test your heart. He knows your heart. That's what I mean. Be not, hear, be not just 
hearers of the word, but doers of the word. So when I say in your heart, I'm not saying just say You should know me better than that. I'm not saying. I mean, anything. practice. I'm saying these people that you're. I got, I got, I got a you dumb question to ask you. Where is your heart? What do you mean? Where is my heart? Remember, you said you just said. About, Believe in your heart. You just said a couple seconds ago, your heart, not right. your mind, but your heart. Yeah, that's right. Where is your heart? Location. Where is that? Where is that? My my heart is in my it's in semi it's inside my body. Okay. Yeah. Right there. Right. That's not what the scripture is talking about. That is a muscle that pumps blood. Yeah. Uh, okay. I'm, I'm not trying to say another yeah, question. Don't, okay? yeah, don't, yeah, don't, yeah, no, don't no, no, no. Listen, what I'm trying to say is when the biblical when biblical when it talks about the heart, it's talking about the mind. That too. Is that, but, but, but not just the brain. Though. We're not talking about just, just that's the all brain. That's all talking about. But, but the scripture that's said. That's the place where God dwells. Yes. Yeah, but, right. But, but what does he say in here? Because you even used that about he tested the heart in Deuteronomy. I, I remember that. Mind day, your soul. You went to that yourself. But he's testing what's in here. Sure. So, that's the heart. Okay. You get what I'm saying, all right? No, Believe no. in your heart. You get what I'm saying, Amy, right? Yeah, but. Okay, just stuff, don't though. just don't go all around pulling stuff out of you. Know what I'm saying? Okay, now look. Let me read the scripture from First John, the fifth chapter. <laughs> and I want to know where this testimony <laughs> that John is talking about can be found. First John five. I'm gonna read, brother Rick. I'm gonna read. Till you find a period. I'm gonna read from verse six to verse eleven. That's it. I'll start at the beginning. <laughs> First, John. First John 5, 6. It's going to be talking about a testimony, and I want to know where this testimony can be found. First John 5, verse 6, it says, This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. He did not come by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit who testifies, because the Spirit is the truth. For there are three that testify, the spirit, the water, and the blood, and they, and they are in agreement. We accept human testimony, but God's testimony is greater because it is the testimony of God which he has given about his Son. Whoever believes in the Son of God accepts this testimony. Whoever does not believe God has made him out to be a liar because they have not believed the testimony God has given about his Son. And this is the testimony. God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. Now, in this scripture, it says we accept human testimony, but God's testimony is greater because it's the testimony of God, which he has given about his Son. Where did God give a testimony about his Son? In Romans. By whoever believes. Okay. Yeah, whoever believes in his son. Okay. Believes in his son. Yeah, I think I wrote with Okay. Yeah. Well, that's one answer. <laughs> Any other answers? <laughs> well, the one I want to know. This is my son. I want to well plead. Okay. Oh, I got to find that. No, no, no. Okay, so look. The testimony that he has given about his son is in the Old Testament. God is going to say in Isaiah, for example, Isaiah 7 and 7, the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son. Micah, he will be born in Bethlehem. Mm -hmm. All of the testimony that he gives about Jesus is written in the Old Testament. God is giving a testimony about Jesus, but most people have never read the testimony about Jesus. Do you know that the Old Testament talks more about Jesus than the New Testament? Amen. Just because his name is not there doesn't mean that God is not talking about his son. He's bringing, he's speaking about bringing his son into the world. The offspring of David. Abraham. Your, uh, he tells Isaac, your offspring will be reckoned. He's sending in the Messiah through Abraham's offspring. The Old Testament is talking more about Jesus than the New Testament. The New Testament talks more about the Old Testament in the New Testament. Hmm. No, but the funny thing about that, Abe, when they're talking about him in the Old Testament, they didn't have a clue is what he was saying. No, that's not, uh, that's true. 
But as we read in 2024, we do have a clue. Just like a few weeks ago. 2024 what? Today. Today. Oh, today. What, what, what was the scripture? No, I'm saying today. As we, we read today. We know that right. it's tough. We know right. we read Deuteronomy 18 and 18. Right, right. The Lord will raise up a prophet from among the fellow Israelites. Mm -hmm. When we read Acts, the third chapter, it confirms the same thing. Right, right. When we read a scripture like Psalm 16, where it talks about the resurrection, mm -hmm. is you will not allow your holy one to remain in the realm of the dead long enough to see decay. Yeah, during their time, they didn't have a clue what he was talking about. But now when we read the New Testament in Acts, the chapter, second chapter, it says it cannot have been talking about David because his tomb is still here with us today. Mm -hmm. It was speaking about the resurrection of Jesus. The Old Testament is mm -hmm. talking more about Jesus. And and so, I, I completely agree with you, Amy, but if, if I wasn't immersed in the New Testament, I wouldn't know about the Old. If I wasn't immersed, if I wasn't taught to read the New Testament, mm -hmm. then it would, and and know that it would, what's the word, uh, um, um, uh, suggest that I look at Deuteronomy, that I look at all the stuff in the old. I wouldn't the know references to do that. and stuff, the references. I, no. and would, yeah, I wouldn't know to do that. I had to get immersed in the New Testament. This is why when people get saved, they tell them to start in Matthew and go on down the line and read the New Testament because it will refer you to the old. If you don't get into the new, you won't know to get into the old. People, they don't tell you when you get saved, start at Genesis and go from there. They don't tell you that. And yeah. now, that may help, it may work, but that's not what they tell you. They tell you to start at Matthew and go on from there because it, turn, it, it turns into the teachings of Christ. And because of that, this New Testament refers you back to the old. Well, that's some of the hardship that I face in my life. Is, I is, um, the hardship that I face in my life is trying to get someone to read the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. They will argue me and, uh, and, and let me know. And it only makes sense, and that don't make sense right? because if they're reading the New Testament like they tell you, then they would know that I need to go to the old to check some of this stuff out. They would, they should know that. They, 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 for whatever reason, they don't, but it just makes sense. Be, all the references that the New Testament gives you to the old should make you want to go to the old. And I believe that, that, that people that are truly looking and trying to live for the Lord and, and trying to uh, 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 walk in the Spirit, uh, people that are trying to do the right thing will will end up in the old, referencing what they learned in the new. What wouldn't you think of like he said earlier, people that want to go to heaven because you know I love God. I haven't found uh, a Bible yet from the Catholics to whatever to the uh, you know uh, this one here, uh, mm -hmm. King James version. I haven't found one yet that just had the New Testament. I've never found one yet. And so I'm wondering if I love God that much, if God inspired this entire Well, maybe I don't love him that writing, much. Maybe I've just learned. Well, then that's I'm new, who that I'm new in this thing, and I want to live for the Lord. So I'm, I'm going to read the new, and it will refer me to the old. But what? But when Even that, if I got, because there, there are New Testaments and with Psalms and Proverbs out there. They've got them out there, the little books. And they'll have you read it. But if you are truly trying to do this thing, it'll, it'll make you find an Old Testament. Will it? You, you, you're, not, you're not hearing not, this, we, we hear it. If you truly are following okay. the New Testament, okay. and you're truly trying to live with the Lord, you'll end up in the Old at some place or some time. And everybody's different, I guess. Because I, I started from Genesis <laughs> well, 1 and 1 and just took my time however long it took and then I went back through it again. And I kept doing that, being inspired to continue to learn more and more and more and, and found out these things as he was saying, oh, wow. You know? well, but, but, and, and then coming to Bible studies and, and being inspired through 
you know, messages in the churches, you know, all over, whatever. Well, when you're brought up in the church, Genesis is always a popular book to go to because it's about Adam and Eve. Well, it was the beginning of right. the book. For but me. I'm saying I didn't want to start anywhere in, a, in the middle of the book. In a church situation, if you're in church and brought up in church, Genesis is going to always be there because it's Adam and Eve. That's the story of Adam and Eve. And everybody learns about the story of Adam and Eve, whether they learn it correctly or not. That's what they're going to learn that. But when you get people walking off the streets, coming in to the door, and they've decided to give themselves to the Lord, I would suggest to you that uh, starting in Matthew is a better place to go. I wouldn't send them to Genesis. I wouldn't. I would send them to Exodus. <laughs> okay, well, and, and I understand that. And I, but that's part of the old as well, and I, I'm with you. But as far as learning how to live for Jesus Christ, which I, I'm in agreement with Sam on, that I can learn from Matthew on how to live for Jesus Christ. I can learn that, that, that God so loved the world. He gave his only begotten son. I can learn all that. And if I continue in that, if I continue in the reading, it will refer me to the Old Testament. Which if I'm really, like I said, if I'm really into this, then I want to know the stories eventually. About what's going on in yeah, the Old Testament. But you got to start. You start them somewhere. You don't start them with the. You're trying to get them to live for the Lord. Man, you know, Genesis is a, is a lot you can't understand. It'll blow you away. Well, that was thing. I, I, well, first of all, you, 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 if you have. What you're talking about, a new person coming off the streets, there should be tutors, there should be mentors. You, you, you shouldn't send. Uh, a person out with the book and say, hey, start, I was told to start in Proverbs. But you shouldn't send a person out with the book and say, hey, start here. A person would need someone to tutor them for 30 days to 60 days or else you're going to fall away because the, the, the material is extremely complicated unless you have someone to help you connect the dots and put the piece, pieces of the puzzle together. It happened to me for years and years and years until I got with Dr. Burks, Victor Burks. Okay, now I got deacons in the family, uh, preachers in the family. They never could connect the dots, you know. Um, and then once I began connecting the dots, then they started asking me, what are you doing in the Old Testament? Now they want to know why I'm in the Old Testament. And I'm, when I'm looking like, uh, I say, well, first of all, the Old Testament is this thick, and the New Testament is only this thick. <laughs> And there has to be more content over here than over here. That, that, first of all, that makes sense right there. If I want to learn, I need to go to the other side because the other side has more content in the first place. But when but, it comes to living for Jesus Christ, I suggest to you that the New Testament is, is better suited for a person that wants to live for Jesus Christ. I would suggest that. Well, even, now I can disagree with that, but, but, but for debatable purposes, I won't. <laughs> But the reason why I can, a person that want to live for Jesus is it, uh, this is not a um, what's the word I'm looking for? Teenage woman get pregnant and she just wing. It's not a thing. This walk you can't wing it. What I mean by winging it, you can't figure it out as you go because you're gonna fall back, backslide, and move back and forth. If you begin in, in Jesus said in Luke 24. Beginning at Moses, the law, and the prophets, you will see how all these scriptures testify concerning me. If you go back, beginning at Moses, and when I say Moses, I mean Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, mm -hmm. because Moses is the one that had to go up into the mountain and write what happened in Genesis. Moses wasn't even there, but scholars say he's the author. In the first chapter, Moses is a baby being born. And he's writing his birth. So he's the writer. So if you start with Moses, like Jesus says, you'll begin to learn how to live for Jesus because you'll begin to learn how to purge the evil out of your sinful body. They, Amy, that's fine, but they couldn't do they didn't do it in the Old Testament. Those people didn't follow the Old Testament. No, but but we have it as an example today. I, I, but we have it through the through the New Testament to go to the old. 
You have it in the New well, Testament. I'm just answering what you just said right I, now. I, 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 a I, new I, believer. I'm a new believer. I would send them to the New Testament before I would send them Which book? Huh? Which book? I started Matthew. Matthew? Matthew. I told okay, you. Okay, as soon as I get to Matthew, I'm confused with the genealogy of Jesus. How well, is why am I confused? Well, I am, not oh, you. Okay, all right, okay. So right. I'm a new believer. You send me to Matthew. The first thing I read was Jesus, the son of Abraham, the son of David. <laughs> That don't make no sense. But if you keep reading, it'll make sense. How? Can, continue to read. The, 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 the genealogy is, there. It's the same way you're talking about going to the Old Testament. I could go to Genesis or even Leviticus, and I, and, and I don't want to be saved because of them. I want to live with, the, I want to live with Jesus because I read Leviticus or Genesis. I don't want to be saved then. No, no, but now you just now. Okay, look, we're not debating. I don't want to debate it. I'm <laughs> saying that. No, 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 no. I'm saying if I go to Matthew, <laughs> uh -huh. I'm gonna be confused at the beginning because it, that, that, that's the answer I gave. Okay, you're gonna be confused if you go to Genesis, Leviticus too. No, no, first. No, I said Exodus. Oh, Exodus. If you go there, you're gonna be confused. No, 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 I'm not. Okay, no, why? Let's go to Exodus. No, 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 no. Let me let me get it to you from right, memory. All right, come on. Okay. I'm read now, 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 there was a man by the name of uh, Joseph, mm -hmm. and, and, and Joseph was the redeemer of all of Israel, and then a pharaoh came to power that knew nothing of Joseph, and he said, the Israelites have got grown too numerous among us, and if an opposing army comes to attack us, they're more likely to join forces with them than with us, so let's restrict them to slavery and hard labor, and they gave instructions that whenever the Israelites gave birth, if it's a boy, throw him in the river, and if it's a girl, let him live. And so what? So okay. I'm saying, so that right there is a great story. I think it's a great story. good story, but it's not pointing me to Jesus. It's not wait, wait, okay, look, no, I'm not, you no, no, I'm not saying this. point me to Jesus. I'm saying well, that's what it's about. No, isn't that what it's about? It's about learning. You, you, you got to no, no. So, so this is what I'm, this is what I'm saying. Learning the scripture and learning about God is how you get to heaven. And you got to know God. And you, you have to know Jesus as well, right? But you got to get to Jesus. Uh, and you, you know how you get to, you, no, you got to get to God from Jesus, <laughs> in my opinion. Okay, okay. <laughs> you said go to Exodus. Now these are the names of the children of Israel, which came into Egypt. Every man in his household came with Jacob. Well, that's not doing anything for me. In terms oh, okay. of Jesus, okay. in terms of trying to get to know Jesus, that ain't going to kill it all. <laughs> 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 yeah. Reuben, Simeon, Levi, where, where Jesus in there? The Catholic Bible was so much well, easier. You, 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 need to, you need to tell me a person come off the street, right? Uh -huh. right. Coming to the house of worship. Mm -hmm. They ain't even heard about the 12 tribes of Israel. That's all <laughs> over the place. They ain't oh, heard right. about hey, it. Oh, man, you got these dudes on the corner. The black Israelites, they seen them. You got these people on the corner, Jehovah Witness, they seen them. They studied. They, they had, oh, no, no, I'm saying, people, the, the people who walk into your churches that don't know God. He's talking about people walking up the street with a 40 in there. No, we don't. We, he ain't we, talking no, no, about no, no, the no, no, we said when they come into church, how do they, how they going to stay grounded? That's what we said. That was their initial thing we said. When they come into the church, how they going to learn about Jesus? I'm saying that a person walking up and down the street, before they walk into the church, they already heard about the 12 tribes of Israel. They heard people say that, hey, all black people are from the tribe of Judah. Hey, they, they, they people, you know, that there, their propaganda is out there. Oh, man, uh, uh, the, the, uh, in the Bible, we talk about people coming here on boats. There was black people. That stuff is all in, in schools. It's everywhere. The Mr. Uh, uh, a guy came in this Bible study uh, not too long ago, and said that the, the black people are the people with the Bible. Brother Rick said, can you find it in scripture? He said, okay. And he was for 30 minutes. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? It's, it's, the messages is out there. People, before they walk in your church, they heard something already. Who well, they probably were born in it. Who they who they were, I mean, everybody had a parent or somebody who has some kind of church in them, whether they stayed with it or not. I mean, you know, but everybody... But I, I still say Matthew is a better the book of the Jesus Christ. It takes you through his genealogy, but oh, okay. it, it, okay. it, it does get to it gets to the meat of Jesus Christ. Let's take a vote. <laughs> well, let's vote. Let's vote. Let's vote then. First of all, everybody read Exodus. 
Nobody, if you're going to try to lead somebody oh, to Jesus Christ Jesus. in the room, you should go to Exodus first or Matthew. Well, no, that's not the two choices. If those are the two choices, I'm not voting. <laughs> well, I, well, we'll say old or new. Hmm? Old or new. I know what worked for me. I already told you. What? So I well, started, started from one? Genesis. Now, that that is, when, when did you do no, that, Jerry? Yeah. When did you start doing that? Years ago. Before, well, did you come to the Lord then? Yes. When you started reading it, that's when you were, were here? Because I know you told yes. me you came here. So you started in Genesis, right? But and the reason I did was because that's where the Catholics started when you're in school. And so, but, you know, when you're in school, whatever. You're but see, because you didn't, I mean, in school was when you gave your life to the Lord. But listen, but that's where I learned about Genesis and all these. Okay. I'm with because you. we, were in, I'm we with learned that. it in school. It was a class. And then you learned it Catechism, Old, Old Testament, right. Testament, New Testament, at church on, on Sunday when they did Mass. And then as I went through life, that was what was poured into me, whether I lived it or not is a different story. When I came to St. Stephen's, as I've always talked about, the Catholics was where I got the foundation. Mm -hmm. And this is where I built my relationship with Christ. The foundation, that's a good word. With that's Christ. Right. Yes. Yeah. And and but you did you when you were reading in the Old Testament and the Catechism, were you learning about Christ in Genesis? And I that? was nine years old. But what was the question <laughs> my again? Point. My whole point is that that when you really came to know the Lord, you when you learned about Jesus Christ, right? And what it learned took about to live it. for the Jesus Christ. But what it took to live for Jesus Christ, you learned through the New Testament, right? But I'm asking you, of did you? Of course you did. Okay, that's but the I'm foundation saying. of it is that's in the saying. Old Testament. I understand. No, I okay. agree with the foundation. Right. Okay. But now, when you learned to live for Jesus Christ, it came through the New Testament. It came through living through the Old and the New. Well, he needed both. Oh. You need both. Oh. You need both. Oh. You need both. Oh. 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 Jesus. What did he say? He used to say Jesus directly. Jesus. Not in Jesus right. spent. How many years did Jesus spent with his disciples? Okay. You know, Jesus spent a few around years. Three years. Around three years. Jesus spent around three years yes. with his disciples. Yes. Right. And in Luke 24, he was on the road to Damascus. To a what? Emmaus. Emmaus. Okay. Thank you. He was on the road to Emmaus. Let me, let me, let me, okay. let me, let me tell a story. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he was on the road to Emmaus. And he rebuked his disciples after they spent three years with him about not believing. Said they was foolish for not believing what the prophets mm. said. And then he told them to go back and begin at Moses. Mm. Go back and begin at Moses. And you'll see how all these scriptures were concerning me. And then he said, did not the Christ have to come and suffer and then rise on the third day? It was all written, and Jesus rebuked them for being foolish and not believing what was written before he came. Now, Jesus said you should start in Moses. So <laughs> well, no, but you got to finish. You can't, you can't stop there. Go to Luke 24. I mean, Luke 24, 45, and 53. Because after he told them all that, then he had to open up their understanding so they could know what he was saying. Okay, okay. Now, you make that point. Uh, yeah. But first point I want to make is, did Jesus say, start at Moses? Did he say he began at Moses? 27. What you got? It says, Luke, Luke 24, 27. What does it say? Well, well he, he said, oh, okay. Huh? Well, okay. In Luke, he said, 20, Luke 24... And, and 44, he said... No, no, no. Go to 27 first. Come on, now. Mm -hmm. Discredit, discredit the, the... Luke what? 27. 27. What and beginning at the Moses. Beginning with Mo oh, and he all said, the prophets. He said, he, he said to them at now, 25. Now, now, if you love Jesus... How foolish <laughs> you are and how slow of heart to believe all the prophets had spoken. Did not the Christ... Uh -huh. have to suffer these things and then enter his glory. Uh -huh. At the and mm -hmm. and beginning with Moses and, and all the prophets, uh -huh. he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning him. Now, if we say we love Jesus, where should we begin? You love Jesus. You listening to Jesus. What did Jesus tell you? Where did Jesus tell you to begin? Most, but right there in 20. <laughs> so look at 32. Look at 32. And that same thing. He says, 
And they said to one another, the disciples said to one another after Jesus went away from them, did not our hearts burn within us while he talked with us on the, on the road and while he opened the scriptures to us? In other words, letting us know we need to go get some foundation about who I am so that I understand who you are and can love you even more and live my life according to how you want me to live. And that's where I was going to in 44. He said to them, uh, this is what I told you while I was with, while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Now, let me read that. Same, no, 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 this is the same place right here. Right, right where these disciples is at. Watch this. What were you reading from? John 2. Hold up. St. John 2? Or? Yeah, St. John 2. Oh, okay. But remember, uh, uh, I'm picking up right where I'm connecting the dots. See, I was taught how to okay. connect the dots. Okay. John 2 and what? 2 and 20 to 22. Okay. All right. They replied, it has taken us 46 years to build the temple, and you are going to raise it in three days. This is the but Jews. the temple he's spoken of was his body. Mm -hmm. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples recalled what he had said. Then they believed the scripture and the words that Jesus had spoken. The scripture is Old Testament. That's what Jesus brought. New Testament have not been written yet. Then they believed after he rose, then they went back and looked at the scripture. Did not the Christ have to come and suffer and then rise on the third day? Then they believed it because they seen it. Mm -hmm. They was apostles. They were eyewitnesses to it. Mm -hmm. And then Rip stopped at 44, but in 45 or 24 it says, after he told them all that stuff, mm -hmm. after he said everything that they should do, then opened he their understanding. Mm -hmm. So evidently they didn't understand what he was saying, that they might understand the scriptures. Mm -hmm. So they didn't even understand it until he opened up their understanding. So that was all on Jesus Christ in the first place. They didn't understand. He, as you, as you said to me before, these guys had the Old Testament. They had all that stuff, and they still wasn't getting it until he opened up their understanding so that they could understand the Scripture. Well, he had to breathe on them like he breathed on us. So it took Jesus Christ so, so that they could even understand what's going on in the Old to open up their understanding. Yeah, he had to breathe so on them. He, so, so you can't, he had to give, but you can't blame them for not understanding, if they didn't understand it. Well, he even, gotta, even after, he, after he said everything he said, mm -hmm. up to 44, right. then it said, then he had to open up their understanding <clears throat> so they could understand the scripture. So right. they couldn't understand it unless he opened it up. Right. Even though they, they walked with him all that time. No, no, yeah, yeah. Even though they walked with him all that time. Right. Even I mean, though they, they knew what was going on the under the Old Testament. All of that. They still didn't get it until he opened up which their is, Which is right. Avery's point. You're making Avery's point. Am I? Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. They walked with Jesus for three years and didn't right. know it until he opened their eyes. And so all the scripture all in the Old Testament what wasn't understood without, until Jesus opened it up. Without the Holy Spirit. No, no. Without, he, he, it's, it didn't say the Holy Spirit. It says, and after he talked with them, he opened up their understanding so that they could understand. Right. So they didn't. All of that, they, as you said, Jer, they walked with him all those three years and still didn't get a half a clue what was going and, on. And, and in St. John. Where's that? The 15th chapter. Thank you, man. I've been looking for it all the time. <laughs> and he brought it to six, your memory. 16. Six, the 15th chapter. 15 what? I'm six, 16, 16 and 12. 16 12. and 12. There you go. 16. I have much more to say to you. Oh, oh Lord. More than you can now bear. Mm -hmm. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he, hear, he will tell you what is yet to come. He will bring glory to me by taking from, taking from what is mine and making it known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said the Spirit will take you, take from what is mine, and make it known to you. In a little while, 
in a little while, in a little while, you will see me no more. Then, after a little while, you will see me. I was looking for the scripture that says, and then he breathed on them. It's in Acts. That's an act. Yeah. No, no, no. No, no, it's, it's in John 14, 15, or 16. In it a says, little while. He says, then he breathed on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. That's what we got. But no, no, no. Because, because, now look, remember, in the day of Pentecost, they are waiting on the day of Pentecost so they can receive the Holy Spirit. You need the Holy Spirit, uh, according to First Corinthians chapter two. It says the person without the Spirit considers these things foolishness, the cross, the crucifixion. But the person with the Spirit understands these things. So you need the Holy Spirit. Well, that's not what it says here. You know that. It does not negate what Jesus Christ did with his disciples when he jammed them up. Then, after he told them all this stuff, and, and as you talked about, were written in the Law of Moses and the Prophets and in the Psalms mm -hmm. concerning me. Right. Then opened he their understanding. Because of all that he said, evidently, they didn't understand. Brother John Sandler. <laughs> <Tandler. laughs> they might understand this. Brother John Sandler. I'm up to run. Pray us out. Pray us out. Pray us out of the old. Pray us out of the old testament. Pray us out. Pray us out of the old testament. 